Hey, what's up everybody? Josh Thomas here from the BitBlock to bring you through our detailed video review for Paper Mario Sticker Star. I gotta be honest with you, I am a huge fan of the, uh, of the Paper Mario series, so I'm kinda giddy when it comes to this game. Uh, Paper Mario Sticker Star is of course arriving on the Nintendo 3DS here in North America on November 11th. It's going to uh, retail for $39.99 and you can pick it up in stores or you can download it digitally on the Nintendo 3DS eShop. So basically, if you're lazy, or you just like owning things digitally, it's kind of nice to do that. So you know what? I'm excited. Let's start talking about Paper Mario Sticker Star. So one of the really cool new features in Sticker Star, and I think it works really great here, is the introduction of a overworld map. The overworld map works similar to a classic 2D Mario game, to where you have levels like 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, and it allows you to jump from one level to another way faster. In past Paper Mario games, you would have to like backtrack all the way to finding, you know, a pipe which warps you to a certain location. Now, it's just a matter of jumping into the overworld map and then entering a new level. Uh, this is really what you would want out of a handheld Paper Mario game. Handheld gaming is supposed to be something that you can, you know, play in shorter spurts, so an overworld map works really great with that in mind. And, you know, just because you complete a level doesn't mean you're not going to go back to it to find new things. Which brings me to my next point. You can actually finish levels this time. There's a little finish line, and you grab a sticker comet, and then after you grab the sticker comet, you have a very brief amount of time to grab a bunch of coins that are going to fall onto the stage. Um, you'll get a lot of coins if you do a lot of battles and use a lot of stickers. You won't get so many coins if you really don't do too much in that level. So yeah, you finish levels and there's an overworld map. I know Paper Mario purists might not love the sound of that, but trust me, it really does work well, and like I said, you'd want that in a handheld version of Paper Mario. And again, trust me, you're gonna go back to levels to find new things even after you finish them. But, uh, but of course, as the title of this game would suggest, the star of the show here, as far as gameplay goes, are definitely the stickers themselves. You can do a whole lot with stickers, and they're used in some really clever, fun ways. They're kind of used in two basic ways, though. For starters, stickers are used as different action commands in battle, so they're a way to battle against enemies. And stickers are also used to solve puzzles in the game's many different levels. So you might encounter an area in a level, where you can't progress, and so you'd have to look at your stickers and figure out if you have any sticker that can kind of solve that puzzle and place it into the actual environment, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of different stickers. There's about 150 of them in all, which is crazy. Um, you have basic stickers like hop stickers, which are illustrated with one of Mario's shoes, and there's a whole bunch of different types of hop stickers. Also, hammer stickers. Again, there's a bunch of different hammer stickers. You have power-up stickers like the you know, the mushrooms, the flowers, pow block, um, there's also stickers like a boomerang or um, a snowball. There's a bunch of different random kind of power-up style stickers. But perhaps most crazy are the object stickers. Essentially what happens is as you're exploring the levels, you will find actual 3D objects which look like they don't belong in the Paper Mario universe. And when you collect them, you then take them to a little stand called uh, Fling-A-Thing, and you fling them on the stand, or at the board, and it transforms them into uh, new stickers. So those would be maybe a fan, or tacks, a goat, high heel, rubber ducky, birthday cake. There's a lot of crazy object stickers, and I think part of the fun of the gameplay is finding out what they do in battle, and how you can use them to solve puzzles. But yeah, they definitely get a whole lot of crazy ideas for the gameplay when it comes to the stickers. There are no partners in Paper Mario Sticker Star, which is kind of strange for the series. Um, the reason there are no partners is because there are now stickers. And the reason that makes sense is because stickers essentially do everything that a partner used to do. Partners used to have a bunch of special attacks in battle, those are now different types of stickers. Partners used to be able to interact with levels and find secrets, and you now do that with stickers. So it makes things fresh and interesting, it really plays to the whole Paper Mario feel um, without taking away any aspects of gameplay. So frankly, while I love partners because I think it's always fun to see how they're designed and what their personality is, it doesn't really make that much of a difference and I really love having a little virtual sticker book on the bottom touch screen, so yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. 
Um, the other thing they've changed up is the way that you level up in this game. You still do level up and increase your attack power and your health, but you do that not by grinding in battles, like in past games, but uh, you do it by finding very well-hidden plus five hearts. So it really encourages you to search every nook and cranny in the levels to try and find these hearts. And there are, there are a whole bunch of them, and um, you can get about, I think it's a hundred for your maximum health. So it's really, you know, a couple things that change it up, make things fresh, but it doesn't really tear down what we loved about Paper Mario to begin with. Overall, I think the gameplay feels fresh and new and interesting without taking away that Paper Mario feeling. So, uh, first of all, one of the things that I definitely want to mention right off the bat, as far as visuals are concerned, is that Paper Mario's Sticker Stars World is definitely one that I think you're going to want to view in full 3D. You're going to want to take your 3D slider and crank it all the way up, because you definitely get this feeling of, <laughs> oh my goodness, there is an adorable little paper world existing in my 3DS system. So yeah, it looks really great. It pops in 3D. And also in 2D, it looks great as well, because when you're playing in 2D mode, the anti-aliasing is a little better, so things look a little bit more smooth. But this time around, yeah, wow. I think, um, I think Intelligent Systems, the studio behind Paper Mario, is having tons of fun with the idea of paper and stationery. For starters, there are stickers that are shiny, and they look really great and interesting. Um, you're also going to see stuff like enemies will come together to form a big sheet of paper out of themselves to attack you. Sometimes enemies will even form a paper ring. Sometimes in battle they will crumple themselves up so that they're a pointy piece of paper so that when you jump on them you get hurt. Um, they can also become soggy, soggy lumps of paper in battle if you, you know, get them wet somehow. Uh, they'll roll up into paper rolls. They will turn themselves into two-paged versions of themselves somehow. Uh, and, you know, sometimes they might even take a paper clip and stick you with it so that you can't move. So, there are just so many different examples I could give you in terms of how this game loves being made out of paper. Okay, um, I have a confession to make. Um, I go on daily jogs and I listen to video game music for the most part when I jog. And for the past couple weeks, I've actually been listening to the soundtrack to Paper Mario Sticker Star when I go jogging. It is so good. I love this game's soundtrack. I think it's every bit as good as the past games. It has a very authentic, clean sound to it. It doesn't sound very chintzy. It doesn't sound like MIDI music. It's just, it's just such a large variety of different musical tracks in this game. You know what? I don't even want to waste any more of your time talking about them. Let's just listen to a few samples, and I think you'll agree. It is pretty fancy. Paper Mario Sticker Star is pretty much just as lengthy as past games in the series. It took me about 22 or 23 hours to complete. Um, so yeah, you might think it's shorter because it's on a handheld, but no, this is really a legitimate Paper Mario game. It's not a shortened experience. Um, once you've completed the main story mode, you can do a number of things to enhance your replay value. For example, you can visit the game's museum. When you go into the museum, you can place um, the stickers that you've collected on display. Uh, the goal there would literally be to collect every single sticker and put it in the museum, and you might be rewarded for doing that. So that's something you can do as you're playing through the game, or something you can do, you know, once you've completed it. I'm actually doing it now, and I've completed the game, so it's pretty fun. It has a lot of replay value, just collecting all the stickers and seeing what the game has to offer. In addition to that, you can also purchase door stickers for 80 coins, and you place door stickers on door marks that you would find in literally every single level. Every level has the option to find a hidden room, which you would open through the door sticker. Inside of the room is usually an object, a 3D object, 
that you could then turn into a new object sticker. So it's really fun to do that, just so you can see every sticker in the game. And then um, another really cool thing you can do to add replay value to this game is you can go back and attempt different accomplishments that they have set up for you. Um, they Eventually in the game, the Toads set up eight different flags at the sticker festival, and you can walk up to them and see what that accomplishment would be. Uh, just to give you a few examples, they might be find every single sticker in the game, um, get 500 perfect battles, you can also try to find all the HP up hearts. So yeah, there's a number of different accomplishments that you can try to achieve, and uh, you might be rewarded for doing that. I don't know, you'll have to check it out yourself. But yeah, there are a number of ways, aside from the main story mode, that you can increase some, uh, some replay value here. Alrighty, so you know what? Let's start wrapping things up here. I want to start off by talking a little bit about some of the things that I thought were negative aspects to Paper Mario Sticker Star. Uh, and there are, there are not many, but I do want to point out a few things. Uh, first of all, the characters and the worlds, their themes, are pretty typical. You know, like for example, Toads, Koopa Troopas, they're all just that. They're not like dressed up to be something different. For example, the toad that runs the fling a thing stand, which is kind of like this carnival stand, is literally just a toad. Why not make him like a jester or something? In past games, you would see characters dressed up to have like a different unique feel. You don't really see that here. And then as far as the worlds are concerned, they are typical Mario standards. You know, you got the plains, the desert, the snow world, the lava world. I would have liked to see some things that you wouldn't expect. Like in The Thousand Year Door, we had Rogue Port, the Great Tree with the little punies in it. Some unique levels, the themes would have been really nice. But I gotta say, the worlds are actually really well designed, even though they are quite typical. Um, another thing that's kind of strange is, usually in Paper Mario, you have this pretty grand, interesting, epic story. The story really kind of takes a back seat here. There is a cute little story about the sticker fest and all that, and you meet Kirsty, uh, who is kind of the character. She's basically Navi. She pops up, gives you advice. Um, the story is definitely underplayed here. There isn't like a big epic story going on. But uh, having said all that, I really gotta confess, Paper Mario Sticker Star, for me, as a Paper Mario fan, was just totally charming from start to finish. I really think that if you're able to get over the fact that they're trying some new things here, you're really gonna love it. This truly is a new Paper Mario game. It's not like Super Paper Mario, to where it's different in sort of bland, meh ways. This is different for the better. It's just tons of fun. It feels really fresh. Um, you know, the, the visuals, I think, are great. I love the fact that they're really embracing the paper concept. I hope they continue to do that as the series progresses. The soundtrack is amazing. I think there are so many bits of music in the soundtrack that we're gonna hear like five, ten years from now, and it's going to bring us back some great memories of playing through this game. Um, and then also the gameplay is really great. The whole sticker idea adds tons of strategy into battles and also puzzle solving. Yeah, I just think stickers really do bring some hardcore strategy, so don't think that they're like some casual concept that was implemented into the gameplay. You really do have to know what you're doing when using stickers in boss battles and, and, and whatnot. So yeah. Paper Mario Sticker Star, in my opinion, might very well be the Mario game to get this holiday season, and frankly, it is highly, highly recommended.